There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry, we have a little bit of a technical issue there. The phone didn't want to uh, start the live. Uh, hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. How are you all doing? Everybody okay? Everyone all right? Um, Weather is... I can't decide whether it's hot or cold today. The sun's out, but it's actually quite cold in the wind. So, uh, yeah, not good fun out there today. Who's there? Uh, who's there? Who's uh, who's coming online? Have we got any... Oh, Linda just joined us. Cool. Sean. Hi. People are just coming on now. Ah, oh, lovely. Fab. Thank you for joining us again. Um, so, what have we all been up to? Anybody doing anything, anything exciting? What have we got going on? Um, Sean, um, hopefully you will have seen it on our Facebook page. Sean's put a um, post out today for us, uh, which announces the, the Zoom Masterclass that we're going to do. So, um, the date for that is two weeks today, the 16th of May. Um, because so, we're off next Saturday, so we're going to do it. We're going to do it on a Saturday for those, those guys of you who work, who work Monday to Friday. Give you a chance to join in. There are eight places available. Okay, um, I know you can have lots and lots on Zoom, but um, I don't think realistically I could give everybody the right amount of attention that that you might need. So we're going to do it just for eight people to start with. Um, it's going to go on sale at 9am on Monday. It will be done through the website, okay? You can't ring up and, and book it. You need to go through the website and book it, okay? So the class is £24, um, and that, but that includes the, the kit for you to make it, okay? It doesn't include your fabrics, but it will include your quilt as you go block. It's going to include your zip and your vinyl okay because um i can't imagine that most of you have got any of this vinyl and these zips are a, a specific type of zip okay this is a zippity doo done zip so um the kit will include um uh, sorry the class does include the kit okay so um you will need to let us obviously book that through the website okay once you've booked it we will then send the kit out to you okay so that you've got um you've got it all ready for the class which is why we've done it for like two weeks time so that goes on sale, so it's really exciting. Um, it's the first time we'll have done a Zoom, but we've done quite a lot of these Facebook Lives and stuff now, so hopefully and so along, so hopefully it'll all be good. Um, you, yeah, like I said, you'll get your Quilt You Go printed wad in, your zip and your vinyl included in the price, okay, as well as um, the, the three-hour class. So we've split the class up for from 10.30 till 12.30, and then we'll have a, a couple of hours break, give you a chance to have lunch and catch up with anything before we come back at 2.30 till 3.30 to put it all together and finish off. So um, do check out the website on Monday. They'll, they'll go live on Monday for that. So any comments there, Drew? How's everybody doing? Yeah, we've got Jenny. Come on, we've got Suzanne. we Dean, Marilyn, oh, Jenny lots Brooks. lots of you. Fab. Liz, Dave's there, Nikki's there, oh, Carrie's there. Lots Just and lots people. of you. Fabulous, lovely. So, um, so yeah, so that's the Zoom class, which is will be going on sale on Monday morning, okay? So that, that'll be done through the website. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do some um, English paper piecing again, but I'm going to show you clamshells. So um, I showed you this the other day. This is a little piece that we did in class. Um, it's um, Joe Carter's pattern for pandas, but it uses the, the clamshells, um, and actually the, the applique and all for the pandas is is add-ons afterwards so this idea of clamshells and this scalloped edge okay, uh, so Jenny asked will you repeat the class as as it not everyone can join uh, possibly yes if, if it sells out and it goes well then yes we will try and repeat it on another date we'll maybe do it like you know a couple of days later or something um, yeah we've already had a couple of ladies already ask us that they're not say they're not available or they're working on that date so um, yes we will do it you know if it sells and people want us to absolutely we will repeat it okay um so yeah going back to clamshell so what i thought i'd do is show you how to how to do this clamshell thing um it's a nice little bit of relaxing hand sewing as well rather than i don't know if you can see this drew's drew's playing with his toy again <laughs> trying to get this all in so um it's this lovely sort of scallop design okay and it is it is hand sewing you could i suppose stitch these down on the machine if you didn't mind seeing the stop top stitching but i actually think it's quite nice to have a little bit of hand sewing on the go um you can use this for your isolation uh, quilt as well if you're doing all the blocks and you're going to put them all together as an isolation quilt you could do this um to the right size so the 12 and a half inches for your isolation okay so i'm going to start at the beginning you might have so on a lot of the front of magazines you know like quilter magazines today's quilter or love patrick and quilted they very often give you um 
little templates, little paper cutouts for English paper piecing. And these actually came from that. But I have um, I have got a template which I will put onto the website, which you'll be able to, to buy, um, if, which you can print out and then just cut these out. I'm using these ready-made ones because I uh, didn't have to cut them out, which is cool. <laughs> so nice thing about this is with clamshells is that um, you can use lots of scraps up as well you can use lots of little pieces so the first thing you want to do is make so that's the size this is a three and a half that's the size that the clamshell is going to end up as but you need your fabric to be a bit bigger so I always tend to make a template okay now you can use template plastic again we've got some in the shop we I'll put that on the website this afternoon but you could just um, use um, you know, a piece of card, you know, cereal box, whatever, okay? I like to use template plastic because it means if I want a fussy cut, I can see through it. So, pencil. Oh, sorry, um, Heather said before you go, could you please show us what we'll be making in the Zoom class? Sorry, I was a couple of minutes late. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sorry. So, um, Zoom class is one of these project wallets, okay? So it's got a quilt as you go front, and then on the back, we're going to put in one of these um, zippity doo done zips, which is a different style of zip with a clear vinyl piece. Okay. And the nice thing about this is you can literally, well, you can see how much fabric and all I've got in there. I've got my rotary cutter. I've got pattern and all in there. The whole idea is you can you can keep a whole project in there. We're also going to add a little piece of elastic and a button so that you can actually keep it all together like that. You know, and it'll pop into your bag if you go into classes. They don't have to be used for sewing. I mean, I suppose you could, you know, you could use them if you're going on holiday and stuff, actually. You could keep, like, your enders and stuff in that if you wanted to keep them separately. Um, but I just think they're really nice project wallets um, and brilliant for keeping a whole project all together. Um, so if you, you know, go into class or whatever, you've got, got everything there. Okay, so we're going to put in a, one of these special zippity doodah zips. I'm going to show you how to sew vinyl um, and then also do the quilt as you go block as well. Okay. Hopefully, is that all right, everybody over there? If, if you missed that, maybe watch it back later, okay? So I'm going to get on with this bit now. Okay, so first thing you want to do is make a little template. So what I'm going to do is, um, hopefully you'll be able to see this. So I'm using template plastic, which is going to be really hard for you to see. All I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, hang on, let me see if I can find some, hang on, there we go. That might be a bit easier. There we go. <laughs> like that. So I've got a piece of template plastic. I'm going to draw round my clamshell template and like I said there will be a template on the website later on this afternoon that you can purchase and download okay I'll send you an email so I'm... Heather said thank you sorry for the um, interruption that's all right that's right Ooh, oh I missed that there we go didn't get my line on the round the top there we go okay so I'm just using a pencil just to draw around that okay now you want to cut it out now about a quarter of an inch bigger okay it doesn't have to be exact about a quarter to three eighths of an inch bigger all the way around to give you your seam allowance which i've done just here okay so you can see i've, I've drawn around it and then just cut it out it doesn't have to be exact because you, nothing's going to fit in this is just going to be bent over this okay so next thing i want to do is use that template to cut out my fabric okay so the reason I like template plastic is I could actually though fussy cut so if I want to get that on there and I want to get you know one of these swirls right in the center I can move the I'm hoping you can see this because it's quite difficult template plastic I could move this round to get the exact bit that I want if you're using cardboard obviously you wouldn't be able to do that quite as easily so um, I'm not overly fussy so I'm going to I'm not fussy cutting these sorry let me just grab a pen. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to move the iron out of the way just a second. Ooh. There we go. So I can. I need a hard surface to draw this on. There we go. So I'm going to. I'm going to do it on the back like that. I'm just going to get that in there and draw around. And whatever marker you've got there, you're never going to see this. It could be a pencil. It could be Frixon doesn't really matter and you're not sharpie obviously because it would bleed through but you know um, you can just draw around that template plastic and then I'm going to cut that out okay so if you just want to come up to me again Drew so while I'm just cutting this out how's everybody doing anybody got any questions anybody there groups uh, not since Heather no? no okay 
So have you all done clamshells before? Have anybody done clamshells? It's one of one of those quite traditional things, but I think actually depending on what fabrics you use, they can look really modern as well. You know, it's a it's a traditional technique, but again, play with it. And, uh, okay, so I've just cut that one out. I'm just going to do that again because I need two to show you this. So with this one, I'm going to pop this one up like this. And there we go. Okay. Drew, are you getting all arty with your shots now? What are you, what are you doing? I can see you oh. moving stuff around now. <laughs> uh, Carrie says apologies for my rambling message last night. Oh, sorry, lovely. Yeah, it was quite late. I haven't replied to it. No, um, it looks really good. Um, so Carrie sent me a message last night. I did just very quickly flick onto it this morning um, about um, a TV show she's been watching called um, Alias Grace, is it? Alas Grace, Alias Grace, something like that on Netflix um, and they had some beautiful quilts on there they were showing showing people about um, log cabin quilts and all so I've put that onto my watch list to uh, have a little look at but yeah um, if you've got Netflix ladies might be worth um, worth having a little look at that just do you do that in films though I do I know um, my friend Jackie Bloxham does as well she you know, very often will get oh, I've just watched a film they've got the most beautiful quilt particularly in American films they've always got lovely quilts on the beds I tend end up washing the quilts rather than the beds so sorry I should have said actually before I did that I would starch your fabrics quite heavily okay so I use June Taylor's quilt um, starch savvy or best press one or the other but I do because we're gonna um, you want a nice sharp crease I would absolutely starch my fabrics first so what I've now got is two clamshells cut out with my template which is bigger than my actual clamshell okay so hopefully you can see that looks like that okay so you right love yeah dave just said the boys are watching too oh yes i know dave i'm sorry i keep saying girls i do say and gents occasionally but i do forget sorry that i know there are gentlemen out there too dave mind you you've always been one of the girls anyway so shush <laughs> but yes gents if you're out there too welcome <laughs> So I'm going to use my little glue pen because I find it so much easier, particularly with, with curves, to base this. You can um, hand tack this, um, but I find it incredibly fiddly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stick a little squidge of glue right in the centre and down like that. Actually, I need, sorry, I need the hard surface for this. Don't try and do this on a, on a spongy surface. And then I'm going to put a line of glue like that okay and you want to be quite generous you're not going to put glue on the point you don't need to you just want to put glue on this top circle edge and then using my finger i'm going to press it towards me and then you know i'm being quite forceful with it hold i'm put, keeping this down flat here and then pressing it towards me like that okay and that's all you need to do with regards to basting you can see it's got a really lovely curve doing that Okay, so I'm going to do that again for you on this one. So, dab of glue in the centre and over like that. And then glue along here. And then we're going to press this over like this. Mary asks, only hexagons. Have you listened to Quilt with Mel's podcast? Yes! <laughs> Quilt with Mel, Mel Gedroich from Mel and Sue, Bake Off fame. Yes, I have. Um, yeah, there's, um, she, bless her, she really doesn't know what she's doing, but it is quite funny to listen to the pair of them, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, there's um, some odd little things that they tell them to do that I'm thinking, oh, I'm not sure I'd do that, but it's definitely quite a funny podcast to listen to. It's definitely worth a, worth a listen if you're a podcast listener. Heather asked, what glue do you use and do you sell it? We do sell it. It should be on the website. I like the Soline fabric glue. I like the blue one because it's a... It holds it enough in place without um, without damaging the fabric. The yellow one, I think, is a little bit too strong, but the we, we only really stock the blue one. But we no, that's a lie. We've got the yellow one in, but we really sell mostly the blue one. Most people like the blue. Um, and yet, yeah, Soline Fabric Glue Pen. They're on the website, and it come it comes with a glue stick already in it, and it comes with a refill. And then you can buy the refills. Because you, you don't, you can see how all worn this is, and all the patterns worn off. Because I just put a new refill in it all the time, rather than having to buy new pens. Okay. So once you've stuck those down, okay, 
give them a really really good iron what we want to do is get that crease along that cir that top circular edge really really set in place and that's one of the reasons that I starch as well okay because it will help keep that nice sharp crease okay uh, Lorraine says will you have a template past uh, template plastic for sale please yes we will have template plastic for sale as well again I've got it all ready to go on the website as soon as I've finished here I will get it on okay we've got template plastic in the shop and we've got the glue pens and Linda Thomas says could you use stitch and tear Oh, what, for this piece? Um, I suppose so. I probably wouldn't, to be honest. Um, but no, uh, but you could do. I suppose you could use stitch and tear, what, instead of the paper clamshell? Yeah, you can. I'm not sure it would give you enough of a... Because the, these, these are card. When you're pushing over, I'm not sure it would give you enough of a edge to push against the stitch and tear. You could, I suppose, if you really wanted to, but I'm not sure why you would, I think is my answer for that. <laughs> okay. Um, right, okay, so those are nice and um, really, you can see you've got a really nice sharp curve there, okay? And what you want to do is, and I've done, done some ready in Blue Peter style, okay, is we're gonna join them together, we're gonna tack them together. Now, how many you tack together depends on how wide you want to do it and what size you've started with because there's all different size clamshells you can see here I've got some little diddy little two and a half ones okay and they're a lot smaller so if you're doing um, a 12 and a half inch block you want to just lie these out so that they cover the 12 and a half inches okay so you want enough in a row to cover just over the edge of a 12 and a half inch if you're doing just a little piece like this I mean this is only 10 inches because it was a little wall hanging you can see I've got one two three I've got I'd have four in a row for this okay so what we're going to do I'm going to just tack these first few together so I'm gonna grab a needle and thread which I've got already just here okay you're going to put them right sides together and you want to feel where that edge of the fab that it the edge of the cardboard is okay so I tend to just crease it over like this so I can feel the very point so I'm looking for that point there okay so I just crease the fabric over so I can see that point and I'm going to do the same on this one I'm just going to crease the fabric over okay so I can see the point it's wrong side <laughs> right and then I'm going to put them right sides together and line them up so that those two creases I'm hoping you guys can see this on film those two creases match up okay and then I'm just going to tack it together just with two or three little tacking stitches right on that point okay so I'm trying to do this towards the camera for you um, so I just tend to do a couple of little stitches like one stitch like that just to anchor and then one more stitch and I go back through the loop okay just to hold that tacking stitch that's all it needs okay I'm going to do that again for you on this one here so I'm going to find where that corner is there and I want to find where that corner is there okay I'm going to line those corners up like that so can you see so they hopefully you can see that that's where the corners are and I'm just going to put a couple of tacking stitches through there Ooh, don't pull the thread all the way through I've got that caught now it's just it's very difficult to try to do it towards the camera for you because obviously normally I would have this face in me there we go okay so again just a couple little tacking stitches and you would tack together however many you want for however wide you're going to do it okay I'm just going to do three because I'm not putting this in my isolation quilt this is just a little sample for you guys so my first row I would tack together three four five however many my next row down I want to tack but these are going to sit in between like this so I only need to tack two for that one okay my next row down let's use this one okay I put three again and then my next row down would be a two and then my next row down would be a three and you would just keep doing your rows like that because we're actually you will 
when we grab the ruler when we once we've appliqued it on and joined them together you will lose this half of this one because we'll square it up okay so you'd lose the half either side there and there it's just one of those things there are lots of little fiddly ways of not losing those but frankly it's just not worth messing about with we're just going to chop off the sides like that okay to square it up so tack up however many you however many you need okay make as many as you want tack them all up is everybody okay with that so far you all okay with so. that dawn asked if you use glue can you reuse paper yes absolutely you can reuse these papers three or four times easily okay that's about it okay right so there's a there's several different ways of um attaching clamshells to a backing fabric some uh, methods use just a strip of fabric so if you imagine this was just a strip like that okay and you attach your first row and then you only attach your next rows to the clamshells you don't attach it to this um that's quite a traditional way of doing it um it's not something i'm particularly fond of to be honest i like to have a piece of fabric even though you're going to not see most of it so don't you know don't choose a really pretty fabric it can be quite a, a basic fabric um i find that they're a lot more stable and it's a lot easier to attach if you've got a full square okay lots of people do it the other way where they just start a strip and sew onto the clamshells um it's just this is just my preferred method there's no right or wrong way of doing it but um it's just just my preferred method i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is make another little wall hanging which is why i'm using just a small amount okay so if you're going to do it like this where you've got a big piece at the top we're going to start with the top row okay can't start at the bottom and work up because they've got to tuck behind so you're going to start with the top row what i would suggest you do is iron in or draw in a line that you want that top row to sit on okay so i'm just going to very quickly just press that line in it might be if you're doing a block for your quilt that you want them really really high I'm not with this one I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little bit of sky type thing showing okay is this all making sense so far is everybody with me okay so we're gonna take the papers out have I got my little pins here Ooh, two seconds I, well, two seconds ladies I'm just gonna grab my PK pins there we go just because they're so much useful so the first thing we do is we're going to take the papers out just of the first row i wouldn't take my papers out until i'm ready to apply that row because the paper at the moment is keeping that that circular shape all right so you're just going to very carefully peel back that fabric and this is the nice thing about the sew line glue is it holds it in place but it doesn't sort of really ruin your fabric it's not so not so um strong that it'll ruin the fabric and I'm going to take that paper out, okay? I can then reuse that. Basically, reuse them until they get too soggy and knackered to, <laughs> to use again. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to take the papers out of all the rows. So I'll see if I can get a picture, actually, because we did do this in um, a class years and years and years ago. And I'll see if I can find some pictures of some other examples, actually, of uh, what, what they did. Okay, like that. So when you turn them over, let me turn this towards you ladies so you can see. Because we starched our fabrics and then used the glue pen and then ironed them really well, it's kept that lovely curve at the top. And I'm going to place that curve on the line that I've ironed in. You don't have to iron it, You, like I said, you could... Um, what's the word? Um, oh my God, what's the word? don't have to iron it, draw it in. I don't remember the word draw, <laughs> okay. And you want to pin these down into place, okay? You said there's a lot of the plique pins for toy making, too. Oh yes, yeah, these are brilliant. These little pins, Sarah uses them for toy making because it's so they're so nice and they will hold because they're little short ones, like this. Can you see how tiny they are? Um, they they don't stab into you, so I like them for this, particularly when I'm working with curves, because I can pin down. And as I've said to you guys a thousand times, I'm not a massive pinner, but this is one time when I would absolutely pin, okay? And we're going to come up into that one and just pin this down. How's everyone doing? Anybody out there? Anybody got any questions? 
Everybody with me so far with this? I don't have anyone yet. No? Okay. I do like the clamshells. It does seem, this might seem a little bit fiddly to start with, but actually once you get into it, I mean, I, I quite like to sit, you know, I'll sit of an evening and make a load, you know, glue up a load of the, the clamshells to start with. And then it just makes life a little bit easier to, uh, same with hexes. I tend to do all of one stage first, but that's just me. <laughs> okay, right. So I've pinned that all down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to attach it to the backing fabric. Now, if I was to do all of these, we'd be here all day. So <laughs> we'd be here till, well, tomorrow morning, frankly. Oh no, I've lost my needle. Marilyn said I've sent you mine on WhatsApp. Oh, fab, thanks Marilyn. Let me just grab another needle. I'll have to find that in a second. Um, there. Ah, oh, there you go. Ha, well done, Drew. So the trick with not seeing your, one of, your, one of the tricks of not seeing your stitches is you're gonna match the fabric, the thread, to the fabric that you've, you're you appliquing uh, onto, not, so not the background fabric, I'm not trying to say, my brain's gone. You're gonna match the thread to the applique fabric, not the background fabric. So for this one, I would probably choose like this lovely sort of tealy color. This one I'd go with a cream, this one I'd go for a blue, okay? So I'm gonna just grab some cream thread because I've got a matching cream here. We're just going to do that centre one. I'm going to show you how I would, how I would, do an invisible slip stitch. Okay. Mary asked, do you attach the, uh, attach to fabric backing if you are making it for the quilt square? I still would. Yes, I think it gives a, um, it gives it a stability, because if you just have lots and lots of these all sewn together without the backing fabric, so if you're doing it for the isolation quilt, I would cut myself. A 12 and a half inch square of backing fabric and I would applique all of these on rather than join them individually okay does that make sense so I do this but I'd have fabric underneath all of it okay so I'm gonna have to do this tool I'm gonna try and do it on the side ladies because I really can't do this upside down <laughs> as much as I would like I think I was clever enough to I can't so hopefully Drew can get this so I can see what I'm doing and you can as well so you want to see can you see with that little tacking stitch is there holding it together okay i would do a little back stitch lift that lift that piece up out of the way because you're never going to see this bit i would do a little back stitch just to secure my thread under here okay so a couple of little back stitches just to secure like that and then what i want to do is i want to bring my needle up just on the edge on the background fabric, hopefully you can see this, on the background fabric, but on the edge there, okay? And then I'm gonna slide the needle into the seam, into the crease of the clamshell there, okay? I'm really hoping you can see this, guys. And then down just behind, so I'm not going in directly, I'm gonna go just behind the clamshell and then bring up into the crease. So it's what they call an invisible slip stitch, and it's what we use for our bindings, okay? So you know when you put your binding on the back, so you're gonna go just behind the clamshell and up through the crease, like that. So just behind the clamshell. And it's also the stitch you would use if you were doing needle turn applique as well, okay? So just behind and up through the crease. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Is this in focus enough that you're, you're seeing what I'm doing? Carrie's head. Beautiful zoom in, and G uh, Sheila said, "Great work, Drew." Ah, oh, well um, done, groups. <laughs> Tracy asked, "What is the isolation quilt, please?" Oh, the isolation quilt—that's what everyone's calling their, um, you know, the block of the weeks that we're doing. So if you come back up a minute, right. love, just Ooh, give me a second. okay. There you go. Ah, oh, <laughs> hi. There you go. He pressed the wrong button. Oh, that was because you praised him for his good work. You see, then he had to mess it up. <laughs> so the isolation quilt is what people are calling. We're doing the block of the weeks on a Wednesday. And then we're also doing some extra blocks through the week as well. Um, so as people are calling it an isolation quilt because they're going to put all those blocks together because it's what they made during isolation. So if you look back on our YouTube channel, there's all the blocks there and all the patterns are on our website, Tracy. So you'll be able to catch up if you wanted to do it. OK, Linda had asked, what about a plique on machine? Um, you could do. It's a different look, lovely, because I know you hate the hand sewing. Um, it gives it a slightly different look, but... Yes, if you wanted to, why not? You could 
Uh, you could just top stitch these on on the machine you could just do a really nice neat top stitch all the way around that curve or you could blanket stitch it you know you could get you know do it on your machine just blanket stitch just around the curve um yeah why not you know play with it there's no reason why not she, she said your hand sewing is amazingly neat uh just practice it's just practice and actually it's not that neat it's just the fact that i go behind the clamshell and up through the um up through the crease and then you really can't see the stitch and it is about matching your cottons as well match your cotton to the top fabrics and you won't see it so i would go along this one so i would slip stitch that one into place slip stitch that one into place and then that one okay or however many you're doing in a row okay so i'm just going to leave that a second because i'll finish that later because you don't need to watch me slip stitch all those into place okay once you've done that row, you can next put your next row on down, or down on, okay? So those little tacking marks that you've used, they're your guidelines for where you want this to go, okay? So I'm going to take the... I'm actually... No, I'm not... Because I haven't stitched these down. I'm not going to take these papers out. I would take these papers out. I'd iron them really well. They're tacked together. I would take the papers out like we did a minute ago. And then I'm going to line up that little tacking mark there with the top of the curve like that okay and again with that one line up that tacking kit mark there if you want to if you want to be really precise you can fold that in half and make a little mark but i find that wears out the paper um templates quite quickly so actually it's much easier just to do it by eye like that and then i would pin this in place like that and then i would slip stitch this one to this one okay and I'd slip stitch there and you work down in rows so my next row is again I'd put the middle of that one on that tacking mark there and you want to kind of make sure they're all nicely in line okay you could put a ruler across and make sure they're really straight okay and again then I would tack those down at uh, slip stitch those down like that and you're just going to keep working through the rows until it is as big as you want it to be always using that little tacking mark as my point to add on to okay these aren't very straight because i'm trying to do this upside down for you guys okay and i would keep working and the front door's just gone. oh okay sorry drew's um drew's just had to run to the front door because uh we've got a delivery come and it's an important delivery so um so yeah so hopefully you can see that you would build up so obviously if you needed a 12 and a half inch square for your for your quilt you would they would just be bigger and you completely cover the 12 and a half inch and then you would just cut it back okay you just cut it back so that it is the right size for your quilt all right hopefully that makes sense do you need me to go through any of those bits again um is there anything there that you want me to how are you doing joy yeah. there we go <laughs> is there anything there you want me to go through again no not so far. We just said in doing Tracy said thanks for answering the question. That's really. right, no problem. Um yeah, so if like I said, if we're gonna do a twelve and a half inch block, just start with a piece of fabric this uh, twelve and a half inches, okay, and make sure it's all covered. You won't be able to cover the very top, okay? Let me see if I can un uh, make you understand what I mean. So I would maybe if that was the top of my twelve and a half inch block, obviously make sure you leave a quarter of an inch for sewing in. But you will see a little bit of the background fabric okay and you just keep going and then you would cut it off so you'll fight what you keep going so that your 12 and a half will end up like that okay you will see a little bit but that is part of unless you want to cut it off unless you want to trim it off like that so you don't see it but i don't think that matters too much if you've got that little bit there Hopefully yeah this is really sense. clear thanks Sarah. good 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 so yeah um, like I said, there will be a template. I'll put a template on for um, on the um, website to purchase for the the te what's the word the English paper piece and pieces. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't get my words out today. It's one of those days. <laughs> um, so I'll get that onto the website for you. The Zoom thing is going to be live um, on Monday morning if you wanted to have a go at that. Um, yeah. So what we've got going on next week? So it, I think we did go through it yesterday, but we've got. Yeah, we've got four classes happening next week. So we're having Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. We're having, having a little bit of a break. 
Um, but yes, uh, we've got another block on Monday, the Art Square block. So that'll be Monday. So uh, we will. Um, that's a tutorial, obviously, not a not a sew along. So there's nothing to cut out for that one. How's everybody doing? Everybody all right? Any questions Lorraine before asks, we go? How do you do the faces, please? Oh, the little faces. So if you um, there's a template. Okay, there's a template online. It was in. Le, it's Joe Carter's pattern, and she's done pandas, and she's done. Um, I think there was frogs as well. If you Google. I think it was Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine, Joe Carter Panda Quilt. There's a template for these. So what we did was these were um, I needle turned these, but they could. There's a there's a pattern you just cut out your fabrics, and I appliqued those on. But you could use bond web and and do those. And the little ears, they were like two pieces. Let me hang on. Let me just cut two pieces of fabric. So use this scrap here. Okay. So the ears were like two little semicircles Ooh. like that okay that's obviously very very rough there's there's a template if you find it online you would stitch around like that and turn them right sides out so that they're they're loose like this and before you stitch them down okay so before like say this was going to be a panda before you applique on you literally attach them in like that okay and then you applique but you don't obviously applique this bit you just slip stitch you'd slip stitch through all the layers okay like i said this was just this was a little example this that i did years and years ago now um it's not my pattern this with the pandas it's joe carter's but it's on love i'm sure it's on love patrick and quilting if you google that it's it's about four years old but the templates are still online um but you could probably if you wanted to make it make them up yourself if you're a bit nifty with stuff like that but yeah she did a frog as well so which was cool okay mm. anything else hopefully that helps <laughs> linda thomason uh, just finished my waffle stitch hot water bottle cover really oh good. fab oh yes i did sorry i did see your message earlier but then i had about six phone calls and i forgot to reply lovely send us pictures picture if you can please and let me, let's see what you uh what you've done uh kate says brilliant very clear drew loves his new toy he I does do <laughs> He does love these new uh, toys. That's about it. Cool. Lovely. Right, well, uh, have a very lovely Sunday, guys, and we will see you again on Monday. Um, have a play with some clamshells if you uh, fancy it, and uh, we'll see you really soon. Stay safe, stay home. Bye.